Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beard, two stakes races on tap at Oaklawn Park on Saturday. We'll start things off with race number eight. This is The Bachelor for three-year-olds going three-quarters of a mile. Let's take a peek at this field of talented three-year-old sprinters. We're kicking off a 50-cent pick four in this race. Bergen, the number one, Mike, was in tough last time. Brad Cox tested him in the grade three Gotham. He took some money. He caught a very, very wet track. He caught a very good field. Didn't fire that day, but his first three starts were all really good performances. Dan, if he bounces back here, he's supposed to be tough. The six Valentine candy, though, he's not exactly a standout on paper, Dan, but he's way the horse to beat. Already a multiple stakes winner at, at Oakland Park. There are some very fast horses in this race, and we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. The number two, Frost Free, at least in his last two starts, has just been a bullet out of the gate, including that race two starts back, especially in that race. Two starts back sprinting. Time for Truth, the number four is cutting back in distance. I wonder if that will dull his speed a little bit. And Valentine Candy is just a cool horse because he's really good from the gate, but then he comes to hand and usually works out great trips. Yeah, they've gotten him to really settle in his recent starts. It's worked out for them, Dan. It's actually been a very effective strategy for them to be raiding him. And you mentioned those two horses with speed towards the inside. He's already handled those horses a couple of times. And, of course, the number one, Bergen. Note the LP flag over his chiclet. That means if this pace heats up, he's got a big, big shot because he's got the fastest time for him, U.S. late pace rating. Let's kick things off with Bergen, a perfect two-for-two two sprinting. They did try the Gotham last time out. He ran into just a touch, who came back to run second to the Bluegrass, 96 buyer. He's running in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I'm not willing to say a mile's too far for him right now. Just I think the circumstances of that race kind of worked against him but i also think he's a better sprinter right now and his race two starts back in the jimmy wingfield was very good when he just powered up outside past those horses i won't disagree with that it kind of feels like you know i know he won the wingfield over a wet track that was a different kind of wet track in the gotham last time and he was one of the horses he just looked like he hated it dan he never picked up his feet and he was sort of dropping back early in that race never did anything prior to that all of his races were good i, I get that the wingfield it wasn't a super strong field, but he was impressive that day. And his first two starts were real good. Number two is Frost Free. He's likely one of the speeds. The blinkers are coming on again. In the blink of an eye, two starts back, he was five lengths clear, and they just couldn't go with him. And they understandably tried a two-turn mile with the short stretch last time out. They caught a good three-year-old middle-distance horse in Nash that day. This horse showed his usual speed, Frost Free. A mile's just too far for him. Yeah, especially against those, the, the one two finishers that race are just both better than he is. So he had to settle for third that day. It, it was interesting how much he improved uh, two starts back then. He was really fast that day. He earned a good figure and he won that race easily. Um, we'll see if cutting back, if he can sort of keep that momentum going because earlier on this year or at the end of last year, he was no match for Valentine's Candy. Market Street was a debut winner last year for Wayne Lucas, and then Wayne kind of threw him to the Wolves four consecutive graded stakes races, and Market Street sort of lost his way. His last two starts, however, have been much improved. Won a two-turn mile event over a wet track where he got caught up in a prolonged duel and tired, and then this race when they cut him back to three quarters of a mile, and he was able to settle on an easy lead before sprinting away in the stretch. Now, thus far, he has done his best running when he's on the lead. He can't make it in this race it doesn't seem like it and he did have all the best of it here in this race um he's just not going to really let these horses get into it i wasn't you know totally blown away by this performance but he ran pretty well in here and he got a decent figure for it i still prefer him sprinting dan um i remember really liking his debut early last year uh, on a wet track we'll see what he does here i feel like this is a tough spot for him because i'm not sure that he's going to be able to pull the right trip in this race Time for Truth is the number four, and he was in really tough in the Arkansas Derby last time out. He actually made the lead in that race, and then Muth just sort of took it from him on the backstretch. Time for Truth wound up tracking, and he just really couldn't stay with those horses in the stretch. A mile and an eighth against those kind. That's just too much at this point in his career. I really liked his debut sprinting, his one sprint over a fast track where he beat a sharp, experienced runner and looked very good doing so. Yeah, his debut was good. He got a really nice figure for that race. They threw him right into the Ozark after that against Valentine Candy. Somehow he was favored that day. Um, and listen, he ran fine in there, but he was no match for Valentine Candy. But he's got another win since then. He's cutting back in distance here. We'll see you know, how he ultimately uh, runs without the lead because he won't make it in this field. And, and listen, he's still got some upside. I still prefer other horses in this race, but he's so lightly raced. And he, 
He did run well in his first two starts. He's going to get a price on a Steve Asmussen train runner. That's the five. Cats by five. And this horse might have the right running style for this race. He's been stuck in the first level allowance condition now in his last three starts, but he's shown slight improvement in his last two races, Mike. He just needs a buyer boost. Just has to get a little bit better. I mean, at least in his in his defense, he can get the right trip in this race, as you've already pointed out. And he is sort of trending the right way. And it does feel like he's getting better every time Asmussen sends him out there. But he's got to move forward again because this is a tough spot. Valentine Candy has already won three stakes races sprinting at Oaklawn this winter. They tried an all-weather surface with him last time out, and that pace was very, very fast. They just ran away from him early, and I just didn't think watching Valentine Candy run in the stretch that he really seemed to care for the surface as much as he does at Oaklawn. He wasn't beaten badly, and he still was trying all the way to the wire. I just think he's going to do a lot better on dirt with some pace to track. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't care about that last race at all. It's not a terrible performance. I just I just don't care about that race. He's at, at this stage of the game anyway. He's a way better dirt horse. He has the right running style for this race because if they go to his inside, he's perfectly comfortable sitting off of other horses and still running. And I mean, listen, you have to look at this race and feel like time for truth is he's a major contender in here, Dan. And I realized it was early on for that horse in the Ozark two starts back. But this horse, Valentine Candy won that race so easily um, that it even feels like time for two is going to have to move forward in this race. Drumania, the number seven, completes this field. This horse was well beaten by Valentine Candy in his final start of 2023. He's had three races this year. It's hit the board in all of them, including his most recent effort. This is the stakes race at Evangeline, the Lafayette going six furlongs. And he made a clear lead going into the stretch, Mike, and he's just going to get run down late. Solid buyer speed figures. Big step up in class, however. It'll be interesting to see if he can pass that test. Yeah, I don't like this loss that we're watching right here. He did draw well on the outside in this race, Dan. I won't, you know, knock his overall form that much, but he is he looks like he's found a really tough spot here. It's a really interesting race, the Bachelor, and we'll see where these three-year-olds go because there are some talented sprinters. Let's take a look at our top picks in here. Bergen might just simply be better than these horses at a sprint distance. He cuts back. He should get some pace to run at. Yeah, I, I, I feel like this is the right spot to run this horse in, and we'll see if he can just bounce back off of the Gotham, where, again, I'm going to give him the wet track excuse there. Like his other three starts quite a bit, then. I think this horse is pretty good. I had a tough time with this race. I'm simply just stabbing at a price with the three Market Street, who got back on the beam last time out with a clean trip on the lead. He's going to have to do it from off of it, but I still think that he's a little bit rateable. I think it's too early to just say he's just a one-dimensional speed type, and he's got to be double digits or I won't play him. Three, four, six, one for me, one, six, four, three for Mike, and the $200,000 Bachelor at Oakland Park on Saturday. Good luck.